Now, you probably haven't had a chance to watch these videos yet. That's fine. Okay, so bacteria growth is going to be on the videos, and I'm not even going to answer B because that's part of the embedded question, so I won't answer that. Okay, let's just jump down to the money questions because actually um, the money questions, we have enough information even without the videos to be able to answer these questions. Now, in order to do the money questions, you have to remember your two formulas that we started out. It was in um, section six point two. So one was a clean formula, one was a dirty formula, right? Okay, so we'll see how much you guys remember. So for example three, Estimate how long it's going to take for $5,000 to grow to $8,400. So you're, you're investing in an account here at a rate of 6% if the interest is compounded semi-annually. So we're, we're looking at part A. And the first thing to conquer here is which formula should I use? Like A equals PRT. For semi-annually? Clean or dirty? Yeah. The dirty one. We got to use the dirty one for semi-annually. How do we know we have to use the dirty one for semi-annually? What's the clean one used for? Continuously and only continuously. Anything else we have to use the dirty formula. Okay. So the dirty formula was... A equals P times the quantity, one plus, help me out. RT. R over N raised to the, now you can say it, Becca. RT. Uh, NT, right? NT power. Yep. Okay, so now we have to go plug some things in. Um, where does $5,000 go? P, how come? It's the initial amount, my starting amount. So my P value is 5,000. Okay. Where does $8,400 go? Why is it A? That's what I'm ending up with. That's my ending amounts, my future amounts. So 8,400. Okay, let's get our parentheses in here. Our one is one plus. Okay, then it says um, at a rate of 6%. It would be 0 0.06. Yep. Divided by, what's my N? Why is my N 2? Ah, semi-annually is 2. Remember, N is how many times per year? And since it's semi-annually, this is 2 times per year. Okay. And then my power is going to be what? Two T, right? Because I have that N again. So two T. Now ask yourself, when you look at this equation, is this an exponential equation or a log equation? It's exponential. Where is the unknown? It's in the power. Okay, now let's think back to section six, five. We had a sticky note for this. When your unknown is in the power, what is it that it told you to do? Get the base and power alone. Now, what is my base for my power on this one? 1.06 over 2. That whole entire set of parentheses, yeah. Now, okay, spoiler alert, you could call that 1.03. Okay, 0 0.06 over 2 is 0 0.03. 1 plus 0 0.03 is 1.03. 1, is 1 .03. But I'm not going to, and here's why. Imagine if part A didn't say um, it's compounded semi-annually. What if it said it was compounded daily? It would be 1 plus 0 0.06 over 365. Yeah, not something I could do mentally, sorry. Okay, so let's just leave it all written out so that we kind of get used to um, that if it were ugly, but I could change that into a 1.03 if I wanted to. But what I don't want to do, I don't want to round. 
if I were to get, if I were to divide with the 365 in there, I'd have to round. And that would cause my final answer to be off, okay? So I don't wanna round. All right, so I'm trying to get the base and the power alone. These guys need to be alone, okay? They need to bond. So how am I gonna get rid of the junk that's around it? Divide by what? By, divide by 5,000. So on the right side, that's gonna leave me with one, point, one plus 0 0.06 over two, um, that whole quantity raised to the two T power. Um, on the left side, yes, you could type that into your calculator and you could get something. I'm too lazy to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna divide by a hundred on top and bottom and I'm gonna leave it as 84 fiftieths. I totally understand that I could turn that into 42 25ths. Okay, but I'm just doing the easy canceling right now. Okay, now can you think back to your sticky note? It said get the base and power alone. And then what did it say to do? Log both sides. Now look at my two bases. Am I going to get my two bases alike? Yeah, no way, Jose. So I'm going to log both sides. Do you have any tens or any e's? No, so any, mini, miny, mo, we can pick the one we want. Let's choose the common log. So I'm going to log both sides. Now, what kind of rule can I use over on the right side of the equal sign? Power rule. So that's going to be two times T times the log of one plus 0 0.06 over two. And on the right, um, sorry, on the left, I'm not going to do anything to that. I mean, I realize I can make it into two separate logs, but psh, I don't want to do that. I'm really trying to condense things right now as much as I can. Um, what is it that my goal is on this? Remind yourself. Solve for T. What's happening to the T right now? It's being times by what? Two and? by a log of a whole bunch of junk, right? Well, how do you get rid of multiplying? Divide. Okay, so then let's just divide by the two things that it's multiplying, the two and the log. So this is gonna be log of 84 fiftieths divided by two log of one plus 0 0.06 over two. All right, now let's come back to the directions, the, the original question. It says, estimate how long it's gonna take. Now, let me tell you something. If you walk into your banker and you hand your banker $5,000 and you ask him, you say, I wanna know how long do I have to leave this sitting here in your bank before it's gonna grow to $8,400? If he answers you, um, you gotta leave it here for log of 8450 is divided by two log of one plus 0.06 over two years, you're gonna look at him like he's nuts, okay? So we're, we don't want an exact answer for this. We want an approximation for this. So we need to go get a decimal for our number of years, for our time. I didn't tell you how to round. Now, this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense until I explain it in a few more minutes, but let's go to the nearest 10 thousandths place, four places. What'd you get? I didn't get that. I also didn't get that. Mary Alice? 
At Sierra, what'd you get, Abigail? All right, Becca, what'd you get? I'm still typing, I got an error message. You know what you did wrong, Devin? What'd you do wrong? Oh, it could be a problem. Um, did you guys put a parentheses around the entire denominator? No. Because if you don't, you're only dividing by the two. You're not dividing by both the two and the log. 8.7756. You go, girl. 8.7756. <laughs> Those pesky parentheses. Um, when did that be, when you have to divide by two, 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 like, when did that not be years because it's semi-annual? Oh, good question. No, you're not finding, it was compounded semi-annually. We're actually asking the question, how long does it take to grow? didn't work for you. Um, I'm only taking the interest on the account twice a year. That's, that is totally separate from the number of years that I leave it in the accounts. Oh, okay. Okay. okay they're two separate things. Compounding semi semi annually just simply means I'm going to take interest. I'm going to add interest to this account twice a year. Okay. But I just want to know how long should I leave it there before it grows to $8,400. Okay. So Does that, that answer your question? That doesn't affect the years. It, 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 only, in the, it, only in the fact that the more times I take interest, the faster it's going to grow. Right. But, but they're separate concepts. Okay. Okay, so um, Becca, did you get our um, 8.7756 years? Now, yeah. you, okay, so your banker is not going to say, it'll take you 8.7756 years. He'll say, it's going to take you a little more than eight years or a little uh, less than nine years. Okay, but I'm making you be specific because of part B. Okay, so, so let's go to part B. So this is part A. Did you have a question, Becca? No. Okay. So part B is the exact same amount of money, the exact same rate of interest, only now, instead of compounding twice a year, I'm compounding continuously. So how does this change my question? Yeah, the formula now I have to use the shampoo question, the shampoo formula. So A is equal to P times E raised to the RT power. Okay, where does the 5,000 go? P again, 8,400, A again. E is its own number, so don't plug anything in for E except for E. Raise to the, what's my R? 0 0.06 and I don't know T. Now I'm back to my tips. What kind of equation is this? Is it an exponential or is it a logarithm? It's exponential. And what does that tip say to do? Good. My base and power has to be alone. So what's with it that's cluttering things up? The 5,000. So once again, we're going to divide on both sides by 5,000. So I'll have an E raised to the 0 0.06 T on the right. And uh, again, I'm just gonna leave it as 8450 on the left. And what does that tip say to do? Once your base and power alone, what are you supposed to do? Log both sides. Which log should I choose? Woohoo, I finally get one. All right, so let's natural log both sides because I have a base of E. Now, at this point, we're going back to some more rules. So what is the natural log of E to the 0 0.06 T power? Yeah, it's 0 0.06 T. Remember, the natural log and the E undo each other. And over on the left, I have the same thing, natural log of 84 50 What's the goal? 
solve for t. So we're going to divide by 0.06 on both sides. And now I'm ready to plug that into the calculator. Again, let's go with point please. six four six six. So what you guys got? Point six four six six years. And once again, your banker is saying it's going to take you a little less than nine years. But as the math teacher, I want to know that you're doing them correctly. So a little less than nine years doesn't quite tell me that for both answers. Okay, so that's why I'm asking for um, so many decimals on that. But you'll notice, Devin, that when I'm um, compounding continuously, it takes me a little less time to save up my $8,400, okay, because I'm compounding every moment of every day. Does that make sense? Um, let's go ahead and finish up 6-6, six, six, and then I'll go into questions, um, and, then, and then we'll go from there. So... All right, let's see. It looks like I finished example three or we finished example three. So let's go to four and five. Four and five. How about this? Um, why don't you guys um, try this? Work together on this one. And um, let's see if we all end up in the same place, okay? I mean, I can teach it, but it's a little bit more interesting if you're actually using the brain waves to, to work through it. Um, and you have enough information to do it. Make me force you to speak to each other, aren't you? You're gonna make me force you to speak to each other, aren't you? you guys mad at each other? Did you have a fight before I got here?
if you're finished, you better be verbalizing something. And I know my hearing is bad, but I'm not that deaf and I ain't hearing nothing. Start collaborating or I will keep you the entire class period. So first I divided the word minus point zero four five to the round power, which is like some decimal number, like point eight four. So then divided that by the twenty five thousand. So just um just to clarify, the equation I started with was twenty five hundred or twenty five thousand equals p parentheses one plus point oh six over four parentheses four to the or to the fourth power times two point six five. Yeah. Which should not be eleven, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure the formula is one minus the R to the N. I think it's one four. It's one four. So we can take the two first. That's fine. That's fine. See, look at what collaborating can do. Um, so I have 21,223 point um, so, what the for all the steps in the videos, the divide by P. I did the four times two point seven five, and I got the eleven, <clears throat> and then I did what was in parentheses. So I started with 0.06 and I got 4, which was 0 0.015. And then you add the 1, and then I raised that to 11, and then divided by that number to get the other. Did you do the same thing she did? Mm -hmm. Are you going to explain what you do? I said, I started off by the doing what the video said. What did the video do? Do you know P? So, so think about what are, what are you trying to isolate? So that means that you want to leave P where it is then and move everything else over to the other side. Does that make sense? Have a go. Mary Alice? What don't you know? Because uh, 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 to the 11, that's in parentheses, so it's the 11. Is the power of 11, is that only referring to the 1 plus? It's a good question, Mary Alice. What's that? What I did was I just went ahead and solved everything in the parentheses since there's no variables. Mm -hmm. And then I got that one number, and then I distributed the power to that one number. So what Devin's um, saying is just fine. It's not the route I would have chosen to take, um, but what she's saying is fine. Ultimately, your question is, is the P also being raised to the 11 power? So I'm going to go back to the discussion that we had in the very first week of classes. What's directly, 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 directly in front of that power? Nope. Directly, directly, directly. The parentheses, then only whatever's in the parentheses is close enough to get slapped by that power. Does that make sense? So you have to look at what's directly, 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 directly in front of that power. Okay. Abigail, are you, are you take, is it taking you a different route when you go do that? I mean, I don't know what it was. Well, I mean, I did, but like, what, what if you solve 
the inside of the parentheses. I don't like what people turn around. See, that's why I don't solve the inside of the parentheses. Because you have to use the whole string of decimals to be accurate at the end. So see, so Devin, what you're doing is, is okay as long as you use the entire string, but then that gets as tedious to type in as just typing in what was there to begin with, right? Just, so like, I just went back and so I I gotcha. But not all the calculators will do that, okay? Um, but mine won't do that. I can't go back and select. So um, so what I do, I don't even worry about rounding out Gail because of the fact that, um, so let me talk about rounding for just a minute and then I'll get back to your, your, your questions. If a ship is off course by a little bit, it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference. Like we're talking like one degree, you know, if it's off course by one degree, it doesn't make that much of a big difference. But 500 miles down the ocean, the ship is way off course because of that tiny little error at the very beginning. That's how I consider the rounding. So what happens is if you round inside of a problem, that's like being off course just a little bit. It's going to cause your final answer to be way off course. Okay. So what I do, Abigail, is um, I, well, first of all, let's set it up. Did you guys have it all set up the, the right way, the same way? Okay, so my ending value was 25,000, right? I don't know my beginning value. Um, there was a little bit of discussion about what the formula says. Make sure you memorize it correctly. So it's one plus my rate, which was 0 0.06 over my um, number of times per year. So that's four times per year, all raised to the four times uh, 2.75 years. And I think you told me that was 11. The, the power. Okay. So I don't even, I don't mess with that at all. In fact, if you look at my calculator right now, it doesn't, I have, the only decimals are the ones that you see up there. I did no simplifying at all. Since I want to isolate P, then that means that all of this has to go to the other side. And all you have to do is ask yourself, well, what, what um, operation is happening to the P? So Abigail, what operation is happening to the P? And how do I get rid of multiplying? I divide. So um, I wrote down um, in my own notes, 25,000 divided by one plus 0 0.06 over four, all raised to the, I was even too lazy to um, figure out that four times 2.75 was 11 equals P, okay? That right there, this is exactly what I typed into my calculator. The whole thing, okay? So like um, basically in the calculator screen, it looks like this, 25,000. And then my division symbol looks like this. You know how much I hate that. And then um, parentheses one plus 0 0.06 and then another division symbol with a four and then a um, carrot. Um, I, you do need to use parentheses around your power if you don't use an 11. Now, if you just use an 11, no big deal. But if you use that carrot, you have to do four times 2.75. So that's actually what it would look like in the calculator screen. There's gonna be some variations, like some of your calculators, um, when you push in the carrot, it actually raises it to a power. Mine doesn't. Um, so this one does, but the one that I use all the time doesn't. So it's like, it, it just depends on which version you end up having. And so um, then you're going to get, and Devin, the answer that you read, I would have counted that one wrong. Really? Go back and read. What is it that you're looking for? Okay. Okay, we're on a roll. P equals, okay, I don't care about that so much, but what does P equal, Abigail? Would you, did you enter it in? What'd you get? What would you write down on paper? Tell me what to write down. Just, uh, 
First of all, we need a dollar sign because this is money. Okay. And it was $21,223. I got 33 cents. <laughs> and 33 cents. I don't need the 08 blah, blah. This is money. In America, when we write dollars and cents, you only have two places for your cents, right? Unless you're a gas station. Well, I was just saying that the same everybody else got the same. Did you actually write down the dollars and cents? Or did, did you write down that. all the decimals? I wrote down all the decimals, but then I wrote down the underneath the that. Yeah. Gotcha. That's fine. That's fine. Does that make sense, Abigail? Mm hmm you sure? Yeah, well, I know, but you never said the dollar, and then you kept going with the decimals. So I was like, okay, so where, where, what is our final answer? What is that um, game show? Um, who wants to be a millionaire or something? Is that your final answer? So I was kind of waiting for the final answer. All right, um, number five is a little more challenging. All right, so on this one, yeah, you're, we're gonna practice this collaboration thing again because we're having a hard time with collaboration. So every line you write, you must say something to your classmates, okay? Check in with each other. Don't get all the way to the end and try to figure out what to do. I want every single line, I want you guys collaborating. There's only four of you, okay? So it's not that embarrassing, please. This one's trickier than all the other ones that we've done. If it comes out as a decimal, like no long decimal, can we do it with a decimal line? Do 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 we do it with a decimal line? Choose a common or a natural. Um, 
I'm going to use a natural only to show you that at the end, we'll still end up with the same thing. Why are you allowed to do that? Because of the fact that the power rule says that this power goes out front to multiply. Remember that rule, Devin? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to expand the log R minus four into log R minus one. So the no, I don't know. But would you do it for one? For log four, I kind of like separated that as well. The log four is equal to zero. Okay, so you did the log one and then log R four, and then you expanded it on one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Vincent who made it the Roman Times article before? No, because one plus R over four isn't the same thing as one times R over four. You're forgetting some logic. And so we have used this before. Was that a, like a mini little light bulb? No. I was not so excited. So can you go all the way back to six two when we had um, we were solving exponential equations? What was the goal in six two when we were solving exponential to get like bases? And why did we want to get like bases? Like once we got the bases alike, a mini equation because logically, if the bases were alike, then automatically the powers were alike, right? Oh oh oh! What what what? So logically, you've got a log equals a log. So that means that whatever you're taking the log of has to equal whatever you're taking the log of mini equation time. No, I'm not canceling logs. I'm just setting up a mini equation according to logic. Devin, you're frowning. <laughs> I wrote it wrong. <laughs> we'll fix it. Thank you. So I cut ahead of myself, didn't I? 1200. And then this is over a 32, right? Yeah. So then with that 32, you would have to what, you, can't you can't. It's not and because my mistake, Abigail, don't keep going. I messed up. Because of my mistake, it's not a log equals a log. But we can easily make it into that. We can easily make it into that. But what about going all the way back up here? Can we just do it up here? Oh, wait, isn't that what we had here? Really? There is a little bit we can, by the way, we're going to get to the end of this. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you an easier way. Okay, for the record. So, so hang tight. Okay. I did tell you this one was trickier than all the other ones. All right. Think of this as a 32 over one. Invert and multiply. Right. So that you now have a one over 32 times the log of 1408 over 1200. But if you've got a number out front, what can that number become? It can become a power. So I'll have the natural log of 1408 over 1200 raised to the one over 32 power is equal to log of one plus R over four. And by the way, if you're still using the common log, don't be writing down the LN, okay? Be writing down the common log. So now I'm back to, I actually do have a log equals a log. By the time we get done with this, you're probably gonna hate me. Hate something, I don't know what, but I uh, yeah. Okay, so now I can set up my mini equation, 1408 divided by 1200, all raised to the one over 32 power is equal to one plus R over four. It's kind of smooth sailing from here, right? You're trying to get R by itself. So what can you do? Subtract one. And what else? Can I do it all at the same step? Wait, it's already dividing four. Uh, multiply by the whole thing by four, right? Okay, so go type that into your calculator. Hmm? I'm just trying to understand. 
Okay, so you got point zero two zero zero. What comes next? Three one. But this is a rate, so you do have to write it as a percentage. Okay, so what would it be as a percentage? Two percent, and don't do any rounding until after you go back to percents. Okay, for instance, like if my answer had been um, point zero. Um, two, zero, five, one. Okay. Then I would have said this is 2.05%. You see what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't have done the rounding first and then the percentage. Do the percentage first, then the rounding. Okay. Now let's talk about an easier way. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning. All the way back to the beginning. And I'm going to turn this into 32 since that was basically what we were looking at. Um, actually, let's do this. I'll just get rid of my logs. Look at this line, that top line there. Um, so I got a question for you. Um, when you have something squared and you're trying to get rid of squares, what do you do? Square root of size. When you have something raised to the third power and trying to get rid of the third power, what do you do? cube root it, but then um, we've also learned that um, roots can be written in another way, right? So if I wanted to square root both sides, what's another way to write a square root? A one half power, right? A square root is a one half, what's another way to write a cube root? A one third power. Okay, now if I wanted to get rid of a 30 second power, what would be a good way to do that? You could take the 30 second root, which is like nasty, or you could raise both sides to the one over 32 power. On the right side of the equal sign, what happens with the 32 power and the one over 32 power? They cancel each other out. So on the right side, I'm just left with one plus R over four, yeah? Can, can you look, look up at the screen? Let's go all the way down to our mini equation. There it is. Look at all that we, that we could have cut out, but that's okay. I didn't give you any direction on that. And we had the extra time, so. So if you're trying to get rid, if you've got an unknown and it's in the base, if your unknown is in the base, just try to get rid of your power by using roots or fraction powers, which is the same thing, okay? So yes, logging both sides will work. It just takes a lot longer, right? So, okay. All right, so that's all I have for you.